this is um, this is one of the modules, one of many modules on uh, the space station. This is uh, the Kibo, uh, which is Japanese for hope. It's the uh, Japanese pressurized module. This area that you're seeing right here around me and extending uh, about uh, at least another 12 meters or 13 meters behind me. If I could turn that camera around and float it over to a window, I could show you the exposed facility, which is this uh, spectacular uh, uh, location where we've got an airlock here and we can place scientific samples using a robotic arm uh, out into the vacuum of space. Uh, there's a, a number of payloads out there right now that are doing uh, science, uh, studying the sun, studying deep sky objects. We've got materials uh, payloads out there as well. In the, the JPM, there are many, many racks uh, that are uh, here that do everything from uh, from uh, cell biology, this one behind me uh, to the right in your camera view. Uh, we've got a gradient uh, heating furnace. Um, we actually have a crop of cucumbers that's, uh, that's being uh, studied over here, and it's a, it's a special uh, biology experiment that also gives us, the uh, in that facility, the capability of um, uh, centrifugally accelerating and uh, studying, in this case, uh, gravitropism, or the response to plants in the presence of uh, a simulated gravity environment through the spinning of the centrifuge. And uh, there's an experiment uh, uh, back towards the left of your view, very deep in this field of view, which uh, allows you to acoustically levitate materials to actually process, uh, do processing of materials absent the gravity-induced convection you have on planet Earth. And uh, you can do those. Uh, uh, that experiment actually is, uh, is, is still got some work to go to get it uh, running, but uh, that's one of many facilities that are in here. There's a number of racks, one of, I think, a total of eight that allow you to, in a modular fashion, install uh, uh, small payloads uh, that will basically uh, accept power from the space station, have uh, be thermally controlled and regulated, uh, exchange data and uh, telemetry, commanding and so forth uh, through the space station assets, allow payload um, developers on the ground to, uh, to work those. And we've got, like I say, a number of those racks scattered throughout the entire uh, U.S. segment on space station. What I'd like to do, I think, is uh, try to give you a little bit of a virtual tour, albeit using some of the fixed cameras that we have on Space Station, and uh, show you some of the other modules. We don't have a lot of time, and I can't show you into the Russian segment. Uh, I can talk a little bit about the science that's going on there, but unfortunately, the video system that we have set up for today doesn't allow me to go um, far enough aft to show you the equipment there. But um, if you're ready, I'll go ahead and take you over to the European experiment module, the European module Columbus. Okay, so this is the, the Columbus European module. Uh, we do a lot of life sciences experiments here, and uh, there's also some uh, fluid physics experiments. There's a laboratory directly above uh, my head and uh, up in your field of view, which is a fluid science laboratory. And in there, we essentially have an Earth simulator, and it uh, it's basically represents uh, the Earth's core and the mantle and allows you to do experiments uh, in a simulated environment to better understand the, the internal workings of uh, planet Earth from a geologic standpoint. Uh, we've got a number of cell biology type experiments here. We've got a culture, uh, the capability to do culturing of, uh, of cells and, uh, and uh, also to centrifugally accelerate those. Uh, this bio laboratory that's off to my left, you're right in the field of view. We do a lot of our experiments on station uh, directed towards understanding how to keep humans healthy and safe in space long enough to go beyond low Earth orbit. And uh, a lot of those involve studying in a semi-non-invasive way how our bodies change. So we are both experimenters and subjects on a lot of that science. So a, a big... Uh, contribution towards that are what we call the human research facility racks, and we've got two of those in here. And uh, one of the experiments that we do, uh, actually a number of them, use a specific uh, piece of equipment in there, an ultrasonic uh, or an ultrasound equipment, basically, and, it's, and uh, we all get training pre-flight, and, uh, and we all learn how to uh, be pretty decent uh, ultrasound uh, technicians, and uh, we're essentially doing studies, albeit under the guidance of some very smart and talented folks on the ground, to understand how the heart muscle changes, for example, in the weightless environment of space. There's not a lot of force, the force of gravity that we have to interact with all the time, and your body is just as strong as it needs to be for the environment it's in. 
So there is some atrophy and uh, some changes that occur in the heart muscle. There's also some changes that occur in the entire vascular system. And so with the ultrasound, we can study the heart muscle. We can and we can do it uh, immediately following the exercise. We can do it in a resting state. We can study how blood vessels change, how the volume, um, uh, the uh, the uh, the area essentially for uh, the, the blood vessels, how those will change and adapt over uh, the period of time you have uh, here on orbit. Um, and it helps scientists uh, better understand, again, how to mitigate some of the detrimental issues that you'd have uh, due to the weightlessness of space. Uh, we have a body mass measurement uh, piece of equipment over there that's also in that same rack. And uh, it's kind of a unique problem trying to measure somebody's mass in a weightless environment. So we don't have any weight, but we still, of course, retain uh, mass. And there's two different ways to do it. One is to do it the way uh, a piece of equipment in the Russian segment works, and that is to accelerate um, and oscillate um, uh, the mass, whether it's our cells or our experimental hardware. And uh, basically, the lighter something is, the, uh, the higher the frequency of the oscillations will be given a, a fixed uh, spring constant. So that's one way we do it. We also have another way just using F equals MA and uh, we essentially apply a fixed force and we look at the time it takes to accelerate or, or time it takes to recover a specific distance and integrate that to get the acceleration and we can find what the mass is that way. So uh, we have another piece of equipment here off to your left which is called MARES and that is specifically designed to understand how um, how much force, how much output our muscles uh, can generate here in space. It's still in the checkout phase right now, and it's very big and very impressive. Um, and uh, let's see, there's a, a number of other kinds of uh, facilities here that allow us to, to do blood work and uh, to analyze uh, samples of blood and urine and, and uh, help understand the biochemistry changes that occur uh, due to weightlessness and being in the space environment for half a year. Okay, and this is the U.S. Laboratory Destiny that I'm in right now, and uh, it is uh, full of all different kinds of equipment to do everything from combustion experiments, which we do in this combustion integrated rack, to fluid physics, which we do in this rack over here. Uh, we've got a microgravity science glove box here, which allows you to have experiments or materials that might be a little bit hazardous and to, uh, to do, to basically operate and uh, interact with those experiments isolated from the habitable volume of the, uh, the space station. Off to your right in this, uh, in your view right now, and I'll see if I can give you, well, I'll just hand it off here a little bit to the right. Uh, just to, to your right, I can't get all the way around to it, but Robonaut, which is a technology demonstrated um, demonstration piece of hardware, and it's a, a humanoid uh, dexterous robot that allows us uh, essentially to understand how to create um, robotic equipment to assist and uh, and uh, operate with the crew on board space station, and so Robonaut's going through some uh, checkouts right now. It's uh, it's a phenomenally uh, capable robot with something on the order of 40 or so degrees of freedom. So it's got a hand that operates just like our hands do, and it's got uh, you know full. It's got a, a, a broad wingspan. Um, from a uh, from a human standpoint, but basically it's designed to interact with all the things that we interact with. And actually, last month, Robonaut was here where I'm standing, taking airflow measurements from our ventilation system right nearby with uh, one hand uh, holding the probe near the, uh, the ventilation ducts and another hand uh, holding the instrument and with his uh, eyes, if you will, which are cam cameras that are located just where uh, human eyes would be, uh, reading the display um, and operating that, uh, that piece of equipment. Down the, down the road, I think the goal would be to have that kind of technology to be able to take outside with you when you do spacewalks, for example. And all the tools we, we would use outside uh, um, during EVAs or extravehicular activities, Robonaut would be able to operate as well. So uh, great technology there. Um, we've got lots of equipment to keep us healthy and safe. One of our key um, pieces of equipment to exercise is a um, a vibration isolated bicycle, essentially, and uh, it's an ergometer, and it's uh, isolated from the structure of space station. So as you pedal it, you're not putting vibrations into the structure that would disturb uh, microgravity uh, sensitive kinds of payloads, like material science payloads. And uh, we similarly do a vibration isolation uh, through vibration isolation. Have a treadmill that uh, will allow you to run as fast as 12 
or more than 12 miles an hour, and uh, and and uh, essentially keep all of the vibration of the impacts of your feet, your footfalls on the tread. Um, isolated from the structure as well. And it's critical for us to be exercising like this on the order of two, and two or so hours a day uh, to keep from uh, getting too deconditioned to be able to safely return uh, home. And Captain Burbank, uh, really, again, on behalf of the crew here at Air Station Houston, appreciate you taking the time to uh, give us the tour, give us, a, give us an opportunity to understand kind of what it is you all do up there. Uh, Add that into what we did earlier today, the, getting to see the mock-up gave us a, a really great, I, I don't think as you watch on TV or, or any other thing, when you get to see the mock-up, you really get an idea of the, the, the size, the actual size of the space station up there. I think a lot bigger than a lot of us had originally thought. And to me, one of the most amazing parts is uh, as we watch the moving map here talking to you, uh, realizing that you've, the distance you've covered over the short time we've been speaking, you made it from about the... You know, midway from midway Southern Pacific to halfway between uh, South America and Africa is really kind of an amazing thing to think about as well. We have you on board today, and uh, and it's real hard to tell you in, in such a short period of time just what a spectacular place this is. But uh, you certainly got a sense for it in the mock-ups, and uh, the little bit that I was able to show you today hopefully showed you, you know, told you a little bit more of the story. But uh, but it's uh, it's a, a phenomenal place, and uh, and it is hard for me to believe right now that there are just a very few weeks left before uh, before I'll return. Uh, the best part, of course, is to get to see family and friends again. That's one thing you don't do nearly enough of during the training leading up to this and uh, certainly you feel very remote sometimes from family while you're up here but uh, but uh, there'll be a, a lot of time to catch you up very shortly for me but there's always going to be a part of me that's going to very much miss this miss this environment uh, miss working with these wonderful teams on the ground miss doing the science that we do up here but uh, we'll be handing the baton off to some incredibly capable people down the road too so all the best to you it was great having you on board and uh, hope to talk to you when I get back in a couple of weeks